My name is Eric Slater. I'm a CTA bus driver, obviously. Uh, I have driven the city buses for the Chicago Transit Authority for 10 years. Uh, a year ago, my coworkers elected me to be, the union to be their union steward. And I'm so proud uh, and humbled to have represented them and over 600 workers, working families at the CTA bus garage. Uh, I'm also an elected executive board member for the Amalgamated Transit Union Local 241. Uh, we represent 10,000 working families, CTA and PACE, suburban bus drivers, maintenance, and clerical workers. Along with other uh, working people. Please feel people, free to continue outside, okay? Do you have a statement in writing that this, this, this is being disrupted? What is your position? Then how are you giving us an order if you, if you don't have a position? There's no position here. We just ask that you go outside. You're, feel free to continue. What's your name? Outside. Okay. Please continue so outside. Unless, unless you give me uh, some credentials. Okay. Along with other working people. And we have to deal with all the problems that go on in the garage, all the things that a union steward has to do. We're getting calls at 2 or 3 in the morning to assist our, our, our members, not just about workplace issues, family life issues. That's what a steward does. So we're extremely vulnerable, right, to, to, re to attacks by management against us. And they know it. And it's our job to stop them from doing that, to say, no, we have an agreement. We have a contract that you made a promise. We have banded together as workers to form an organization so that they didn't, didn't pick us off one by one or pit us against each other. That's our union. And our union has a contract. And so that's what this is about. How dare I, as a bus driver, tell a manager that he's breaking the contract. When a member comes to me and says, is it legal or is it contractual for a manager to tell me to tell another one of my coworkers to go see the manager? It's like tattling on each other. That's wrong. So a 25-year veteran bus operator who knew I was the steward says, can they do this? So what am I supposed to do as a steward? I'm supposed to investigate it. They're saying that I interfered with a manager's order, and that's insubordination, and they want to fire me. So what will that do if they can fire someone for, for defending the contract, for defending their coworkers, for collectively organizing? That's going to put a chill on anyone else who wants to do that. And as we know, the union movement is under severe attack, nationally and locally. And we have to start standing up to this. And even if they are able to fire me today, we are going to continue to fight, right? We're gonna, we're gonna con I'm going to continue to represent my coworkers, and I'm, and I'm not giving up. You have problems where you have Uber, Lyft, bikes, red lights, speed cameras. You have the highest crime rate in the country. You have murderers, gangbangers getting on a bus with you. The police officers, they have guns. We have nothing. So who's afraid of who? The police are afraid that they might get killed. We on the bus. We might get killed. Somebody just opened up the door. We don't have no protection. We don't have no gun. But yet they, they started me at minimum wage, $8.50 an hour at minimum wage, a Vietnam era veteran. I lost my business. I came here to work two and a half years ago as a part-timer. I'm still a part-timer. Once I got here, I found out that it is terrible. This man right here, when I came to the garage at North Park, he had meetings explaining to all of us what was going on every day out here on the street, how they can accelerate charges, how all of a sudden, if there's one rule, they said, no, we're going to accelerate that rule where you can fire you now. Even though the rule was three for three years, now it's one year. Eric and I started together 10 years ago. I know Eric as a good friend. Uh, I think he's one of the best union reps that we've ever had to come along, if not the best one. Um, 
I'm off, I was off injured on duty and they fired me because I wouldn't sign a short term disability. So Eric works with us as me as being a co-worker to help us so these things won't happen because there's a lot of things going on with CTA that shouldn't be going on. My name is Tano Muhammad. I'm the second vice president of 241. How many years you got? So I'm a 30 year, I've been here for 30 years, going on 28 years as a bus operator. And we know all the infractions, all the things that CTA has put up on us as operators. And I stand with Eric as well as all of the officers. We stand behind Eric, and I just want to let him know that we are in his corner uh, as officers. And as I say, I'm here to speak, uh, to stand with them, and we're going to do all we can to, if anything should happen, we're, we're here. So. Good morning. My name is Charlie Peacock. I am the first vice president of Local 308, the sister Local 2241. We're here in solidarity with our brother Eric to show that if you attack one of our locals, you're attacking all of our locals. Yes. Also, in our contract, we have a clause, 2.3, union affiliation. The authority will neither discharge nor discriminate against an employee covered by this agreement because of his or her connection with Local 241 or 308. So clearly, that is a violation of our contract. And once again, Local 308 stands firmly behind Eric. He sees that public services are under attack in the city, both for bus drivers, for train drivers, and for teachers, and that we were trying to, we were having a meeting off-site at a McDonald's near the North Park bus barn in order to, to talk with bus drivers about our common issues, about how we need more money for the schools and more money for public, for public transportation. And the bus drivers that came to us said management was intimidating people from coming, and apparently they're attacking. I'm not surprised at all that they would attack somebody who wants to defend public services and who wants to draw the connections between our struggles. We teachers are in a struggle right now with Mayor Emanuel, and apparently they're attacking Eric for pointing that out to his coworkers. What's happening to Eric today is an unlawful and severe escalation of management's divide and conquer strategy. It began at the beginning of this year when management tried barring union members from exercising their First Amendment right and their rights under the Labor Act to uh, distribute flyers for Chewy Garcia. The federal court gave a preliminary injunction against that unlawful command. What we've experienced since then is a campaign to divide bus workers from teachers. Uh, the substance of Eric's unfair labor practice charge is that the, AT, or is that the CTA management has been prohibiting uh, bus workers from putting up flyers, from holding meetings uh, in break rooms uh, to discuss support for teacher bargaining. Uh, if, if management can get away with these kinds of actions, if management can get away with terminating an executive board member in the middle of bus driver bargaining, uh, who's supporting bus drivers uh, as strongly as anybody uh, I know, and who's supporting teachers as strongly as anybody I know, that's going to have uh, a, a terrible impact on the First Amendment rights of any uh, you know, bus driver at CTA, and it's also going to impact the public, because the public has a right to hear the, the opinions of, uh, uh, of public employees uh, on how to improve the service uh, to people who ride public transit and how to improve the service of our public education system.